Valley's Elementary School for the Arts and Sciences was uh, begun in the year 1992. And we take in about 200 students from outside our boundaries, and there are about 700 students within the boundaries. We come from about 45 different nations and speak about 25 different languages. Uh, we have an integrated program that's one program for all students. It's not a school within a school. We uh, don't have a separate program for those students who come from outside our boundaries. Our academic goals here at Bailey's are to provide a program that will meet the needs of uh, all students, but particularly our second language students who need an interactive, hands-on program. So that was one of our goals. And the brain researcher, Renata and Jeff Kane, uh, is what we relied upon in their book called Making Connections. And we, it, it's that, that book says that we need to give kids uh, lots of opportunities to interact with their learning and experiential learning. Uh, also, inquiry is very important to us. And another thing that's important is giving children lots of different ways to show what they've learned. And that also works well for, our, uh, for all students because uh, students learn and uh, do express themselves in different ways. All students have the benefit of every resource that we have in the school. All students have many ways to show what they've learned. We try to respect students and I think that they respect us and love school in turn. And that's certainly our goal, that kids become lifelong learners and love learning. Instruction at Bailey's uh, is actually based on a program of studies and the standards of learning as it is in any other school. It's just our method of delivery that's a little bit different. And we do all of our teaching, or as much as we can, through the conceptual unit. Uh, conceptual units are done at every grade level, and they do more than one unit. Each grade level does usually more than one unit. There are varying lengths. Uh, for instance, the first grade does winter adaptations, uh, the second grade does habitats, uh, and uh, the fourth grade does an interesting um, conceptual unit called attributes. Think about the setting, the characters, the different attributes of this story, okay? And then you can even think, because we're going to be six years ago, this story with uh, a group of teachers wanted to approach learning in a different way. We wanted to, to teach our children differently. We didn't want to teach things in isolation. We wanted to be able to, to make things um, weave together and to, to see commonalities and, and to um, also to, you know, just think of things in, in a theme or a concept as opposed to teaching things in isolation. We wanted to have the children look at things in a holistic way instead of just in isolation. As a team, we, we chose the unit. We sat down over, over the summer and looked at the Fairfax County Program of Studies and all the different resources we had available to us. And we reorganized the POS into um, different time periods that fit in, that seemed to fit together. Like right now in attributes, um, we're studying the attributes of the planets and space and the sun and the earth and the moon and all the different things about space. Um, we'll be studying the attributes of different types of literature throughout the year. Um, autobiographies and biographies fit right in. They can discover the attributes of characters by studying first their own attributes and writing autobiographies. Um, that's really the way it came together was just looking at what fourth graders need to know and how they can really tie it together rather than be taught individually. And it just makes their learning so much more meaningful, purposeful, and um, just there's just so much more you could do it. And you're constantly saying it, they're constantly thinking it, and they're constantly, you know, um, being critical thinkers and um, analyzing things, and comparing, contrasting, and they're like, hey, yeah, this is like this, this is like that. So, and they, you know, they're able to see the connections and tie it in. The units are, uh, that we do are very fluid because we uh, use what we learn during instruction to plan future instruction. And whatever the children tell us in their learning and in, in the process of instruction, whatever we're seeing them uh, do and how, the ways in which they respond help us to decide what we're going to do next. So the units are very fluid. 
they change from year to year. So we have had people drop units. We've had people go to one unit from three. We've had them go from one to three. So the, the teams try to respond to the children and what, they, what their needs are and where their interests lie. What kind of planet, we realize what kind that of all like, you instruction is not going to fit neatly into uh, yeah, a conceptual yet. unit. And there are some things where we're going to have to have direct instruction, which is not related to the conceptual unit. And we're comfortable with that. We know when we have to do that. Uh, it's just that we try to, whenever we can, we try to integrate the disciplines, integrate the concept into everything we do. We think that the conceptual unit is our best method of delivery of instruction at Bailey's because it gives uh, kids something to hang on their learning on. For instance, the conceptual unit is different from a thematic unit. A thematic unit might have everything tied into bears, for instance, and it, uh, whereas the conceptual unit is a much deeper and broader thing. It includes all of the disciplines and it, it's, it's, it's something like attributes or change or adaptations or patterns, something that is across a, a broad range of disciplines. And we integrate all those disciplines into the conceptual unit. We use this word attributes a lot. We, we talked about it in geometry. We talked about it. When we did rocks and minerals, we use this word a lot. To talk we about began the yesterday, and we were talking about what a survey is and, and the components or the attributes of a survey. And we're looking at the steps that you would take in order to to do one. So they were learning more depth about the process. They have interviewed their parents and other members that have come into the school, but this was a little different in that they were taking information from more than one source. And they're taking it now and they're going to present it in a mathematical way instead of in a written form or questionnaire. They're going to go beyond that and show it by, with a chart or a pie graph. Well, this is a lifelong learning skill. And so they are learning to interview, ask the right questions, and um, for, in, for gathering information. So this is a way of gathering information and learning how to, to take that information and present it and understand and so mathematically, they'll be able to read graphs as a result of having to created their own graph. And they'll know the steps involved, and they'll know the process involved, the details, the components of a survey. So it's a, it's a lifelong skill that they're learning. They're not only learning how to conduct one, but now how to read a graph and present it. The process is that we have this big concept, attributes, which is like an umbrella for all of our learning. The different strands come together, and we, we, it's cross-disciplinary in that we, we're using communicative skills um, by doing the process of surveying. We're, we're showing it um, mathematically, taking the information and, dis and showing it in a visual way. Teaching this way, Kids what get a broader yeah, depth right of centimeter? a concept, okay. and they see how it's so connected. We'll just just as we, as adults, here. see connections. Kids learn to make it and, and understand That's things exactly better, like see relationships. They start that, off that learning like something time, discrete, and it grows and grows, and they it's begin to make connections to the other disciplines, you which is something that is very sophisticated that we all want to do. So that's the benefit. Then one day, after a snowstorm, Babushka went outside. She could still and the hear author the that we've been studying is Patricia Placco. And we've been, like um, they looked at the different attributes of a book in small groups. They did cooperative grouping, each person had a role, um, some doubled up on the role. First they predicted, then they read the book together, then they discussed the book, then they, um, they had a format um, which basically we created together, and it was um, on the different attributes of a story, the different elements of a story, character, setting, um, you know, plot, uh, what happened first, second, third, and the different attributes of it. And then they were able to discuss that story and the different things in that story, specific things. Um, and then from that, we, were, we met together as a group, and we discussed it, a whole group, and they were able to listen to each other's stories and, and see uh, the different similarities and the different, different, you know, the differences in each story. And also, they were able to compare stories that we had already read in the past from her whole group and also in their own groups. And they were able to see a lot of similarities and a lot of differences in her books. What, what I want them to do and to become, essentially, um, is uh, independent problem solvers and to be constantly comparing and contrasting things, um, anything throughout their life, because that's a natural process that we all go through. And I want them to start that now 
and because of our attributes unit, they were able to do that also, um, you know, with the story, it's just one little snapshot of something that we do and how we tie everything together. They were doing reading, they were doing writing, they were you know, doing oral language, they were doing comparing and contrasting literature, um, so a lot of things. In the attribute unit, we've studied different types of geography, so what we could have done from these books was to compare, you know, the geography of the, the different areas, um, or we could have, um, you know, talked about, one of the books was Meteor. And we could have talked about that and how that ties into what we're learning about in the solar system. Um, you know, there are so many things that could be tied in uh, in, in weave together um, conceptually. Y los dos hacia adentro, pero están yendo en dirección opuesta. Hoy día, in our classroom today, we were learning about gears. We, had, we were reviewing um, gearing up and gearing down in Spanish, of course. And uh, I was introducing the idler gear. And the gear, the 93 angle gear, and um, so basically they were going to learn about the characteristics of, the, of those gears and build them with Legos. In Spanish immersion we teach the language through the content, and uh, what better than do it that way, in context. And so the children are learning Spanish through an objective in our science curriculum. Our program is a partial immersion program, which means that the children come to me for basically half a day. I teach math and science and health in Spanish, and then they go back to their uh, base teacher, and they learn language. They have language arts, that is reading and writing in English, and um, social studies and spelling that goes along with the language arts. I want them to, like I said before, I mean, beyond, going beyond the vocabulary and learning what, you know, this is, uh, this kind of gear and uh, labeling the parts, or, um, that they learn to apply it to other things and then see it in things around us. In one sentence, you can tell me what the actual mystery, what was the mystery in our book? The lesson that we were doing today in our classroom was a lesson about mysteries. We're learning about the different genres of literature this year in fourth grade. And the kids decided to choose mysteries for this time period. And they were learning um, the attributes of mysteries. And we'll be talking about the attributes of a mystery they're reading currently in their small groups right now. So they're getting familiar with looking for clues and um, looking for the solution to the mystery. Because in the end, they've chosen to write their own mysteries also. Um, my goal for the classroom is to make them better readers and writers. While and I'm reading that's my it, number one goal for every student. This is the picture that goes the along with the mystery. The philosophy of conceptual unit is fantastic. Give you a copy of this um, it really incorporates all the disciplines into a single element for the kids where they can experience learning instead of just having a teacher standing in front of them giving them a lesson. And it's say, you know, this is your language arts lesson. Now it becomes, we're learning about mysteries and the kids um, direct their own learning. Like I said, they chose to do mysteries. Um, we'll really take off with this and they'll go their own direction. We'll use the resources in the school also. Um, I know the performing arts teacher has talked to me. She would love to do a mystery with the kids. And when they go there, they'd be writing their own mystery with her also. So that's you know, just a one way of incorporating in the different resources in the, in the school. We don't force attributes down, you know, in the classroom. It just, it happens naturally. The reason we, we use the word attributes a lot is because it pulls the connection tighter for the kids. Instead of just, um, like I said before, disjointed subjects, just, it really pulls it together, you know, like the real world. You're not going to work and studying math at work or going to work and just doing a piece of writing. You do everything all at once. and. By talking about attributes, it pulls all the disciplines together for the kids. Well, the resources in our school make learning come alive for kids, and it provides that opportunity for kids who can't do something that's traditional 
uh, it provides an avenue for them to express themselves and an avenue for them to learn. They're learning lots of things in these resource areas. The children uh, participate in every aspect of the resource areas. They're not only uh, performing in the performing arts lab, for instance, they're operating the lighting system and the same in the communications lab. They're operating all okay, of the make equipment. Sure that you get They're learning many, many the, things the most important in addition star to uh, performing. In your picture. We're going to be working on uh, geometric shapes and as we go through we're going to talk about diff the different shapes, what makes the different shapes. We're going to be looking at their attributes, okay? First thing the I children want you to do are is fourth grade group of children are coming to work on attributes of uh, um, geometric paper. shapes. We took a magazine paper to start with so it was an easy something that they could work with and we folded it and as we were folding it we talked about the different attributes of uh, uh, specific shapes whether or not rectangle, square, triangle. We folded the uh, initial shape and as we were doing that we talked about parallel lines, adjacent corners, right angles so the children have a chance to identify those as part of an attribute of any kind of geometric shapes and add to the classifications whether we're going from square to rectangle to parallelogram to quadrilateral to polygons. Uh, from that we went into the paper folding and we talked about adjacent lines, we talked about diagonal lines, uh, right angles and uh, the kids folded their things as we went along we identified the different shapes, the different parts of the attributes um, and eventually when this whole total thing is finished we will make a cube out of the different shapes that they were using. During uh, a math lesson, it's very important uh, for me to be as interactive with the children as I possibly can. Many of our children are second language learners. The language isn't there, so for me to stand up in front of the room and lecture is not, an, uh, it's not something that's going to be appropriate. So as I climb on a table to say, this is a square, and I'm touching and I'm feeling, the child that has no language can look at it and, and as I say square, square, and I say straight side, straight side, the child has something to do. Um, and has a visual cue to look at. As I drag the kids along the floor to look at parallels, kids know that there's something going on, even though they may not have the language base, but they're picking up something to do. And in today's, uh, we're having to compete a lot with uh, MTV and that, so we have to make learning something that, um, that they enjoy and pull it into, uh, other things that they do at, at home um, to, to validate it. Otherwise, if it's taught out in the middle of nothing, um, it doesn't mean anything to them, so we do things that they can, a lot of things they can do uh, at home. Okay, good. Now You're going to use a program where you can make your own program, your own um, application that kids can put on a computer and learn about simple machines. The students so in, we're going to use uh, it next year as an introduction. Class are studying simple so machines. You don't want them to think the wrong so thing what um, I decided, yeah. the teacher you know, and I decided, that is that, that you know, they would so create this is my multimedia a Hyper station. Studio stack that would introduce simple machines to the fourth graders next year. So actually, what they're doing is they're they're focusing their learning so that they can teach others through multimedia. So what I did today was I just talked about the different attributes of what multimedia is. Um, what the capabilities we have here at Bailey's, um, introduce them to Hyper Studio and how it works, and so to, um, they will then, as they learn about simple machines, they'll be gathering ideas of how they want to put it into their stack. But right now they're just they're just making a card about themselves just to try it out, see how it works. Now these are all buttons. On down the road, I mean, they have the how they're many going to be they have on this it, when they get out into the business Six. world. If they choose that side, or, you, or say, yeah, you know, if they become teachers, they they're uh, going to have to present material. And what I've introduced to them is one way to present that material in an interesting way and in a high tech way um, that would make people interested in, and make your product um, more sellable or uh, more effective. Before I became the tech resource teacher, I was in the classroom the year the magnet was. Um, established and I created okay. conceptual units myself but before that we were teaching that way because we know that especially children who are learning in a second language that you have to find a hook so that that what they've learned is going to stay there and that hook may be um, saying it in their native language it may be okay you can draw a picture you don't have to write a story but you draw a picture and you illustrate how you you know how the water cycle works or you go into the tech lab and you gather sounds that show the different animals that live in the country where you're from. Um, 
that, that's why I feel that it works. When they come in here, they know that what they're learning in the classroom is going to transcend right. into what I'm working with. And I'm not going to say, okay, forget all that. This here, is my come agenda. Over here, buddy. My agenda come over here. is their teacher's agenda, too. Sit with this guy. So get a good picture of the lava so that we can... The students were learning about okay. simple machines, and Mrs. Sackadorf came to me and asked whether okay. we could and um, study the read? attributes of you. simple machines and do a video project on that. Okay. We decided to simplify um, it and study the attributes right. of, of the lever, so press the, the first class button. lever, second class then lever, and third class lever. Right now, so this ends up tying into their overall um, unit on attributes. Every semester, the specialists meet with all the grade levels to discuss what they're doing and how we can tie it into their conceptual units, how the specialists can tie into their conceptual units. So a teacher, after we've decided what, after I've discussed with a teacher what they would like to do, we then block off a period of time in order to do the project. So they don't come to me on a regular basis. They come to me for a period of time in order to get the project done. Um, it works best that way because if we blocked off every week students came to the communications lab, it wouldn't tie into the whole concept that they're trying to grasp. It would be too fragmented that way. So we like to keep it flowing so that it goes along with the whole conceptual unit. The resources are so beneficial because what they do is they allow the students to see the whole, the, the unit as a whole, not just one thing in isolation. So they get a full grasp of the concept. But okay, why did you say the plankton net for this one? Um, well, we've been studying the Jason project, um, and this year Dr. Ballard is studying scientists who are studying the ocean. It's the year of the ocean. They were learning about different research tools that are used to study the ocean, and they learned about the attributes of the different research tools, and then they had problems to solve. Um, and they had to understand the attributes and figure out which research tool would be best for studying, for solving that problem. The benefits of conceptual units is that they make these connections in their heads and they seem to have much more understanding of what they're learning and they can connect it in many different ways. When I say attributes, they know exactly what I'm talking about and they can connect it to what we're doing with exploration. Um, and to me that's a big benefit. They're looking at things in ways that are different than if you are studying something in isolation. I think this one is this easy. This is where the sound technician would do all of his work, behind or her work. Behind the activity you, that we did today, we um, the students, tape. this is the first time you they've come into the Black Box Theater. For your play they're going to be working on producing machine. their first mini play, and it's a six-week project. No. What they do, they... They've what been studying about attributes, attributes and also simple machines. What are you have, so example, they will create a mini play Courtney, about come up simple here. machines. And I what we would do today, to what we did today, was introduce to, be to them the different attributes Harriet of a play. Okay. We discussed I need that, a chair. I need and a stage what we did here. is we also did some demonstrations Chrissy, from that. Who's been following directions I just want to really make sure that they feel confident in what they're doing, and if they take that away, we can put a red wig on her. When they come to the Black Box Theater, just feeling good about themselves, I think that will help them in, the, in with life and anything that they do. Another thing is just feeling confident with speaking, um, voice projection and using the expression, um, being able to express themselves, and that is a very important factor for me for the Wouldn't kids to take away. Nice really kids can not just learn from life. just classroom situations, Talk from about just some of the science, of which is from, from math. That you they like. can come into performing She's arts very, and learn very, about what they're doing um, in a different way, in a creative way. They can go to really. other parts of the school yeah. lab yeah. and learn Since different things, but when you put it all together, time. they're all you learning the same thing, but just in a broader way. Because it makes kids understand a concept thoroughly instead of in parts. 
if you they, were they see the big picture. Year, I'm when they're do doing it in different sections right. of science with me, with performing Jazz. arts, okay. they're looking at right it in a different way and they're seeing it in a way that maybe they couldn't see it. If they're sitting in the classroom just doing it one way, when you do it different ways, they have an opportunity to catch on with the concept. Harriet, tell me, what's going to happen? Taking your tools of sequence and retrograde and everything you know about pitch, it is now time. What we're working on is taking is short themes, writing an the original book, short and theme, the and using some and what we call music writing tools little, to do that. The students have learned to sequence, to use retrograde, the and they are very now aware of pitch and how different pitches okay. will affect something that you're and writing. What we're difference. doing is we're using all those tools to fit a character. Below, so they have the rest uh, that matches the an note. insect, the in this case, ants, that uh, some of Western characters, ah, one yeah. is an ant throwing Antique. a tantrum. An they have to look at this and think, That's okay, killing you, isn't it? I need to make a theme tantrum. that will relate to this character. <laughs> I need to think about the attributes of music. If it were an elephant, it would move very slowly, so that attribute is tempo. With um, pitch, the elephant is a big, heavy animal, so it's probably not going to be way high up. As a, and we use an elephant as an example and a butterfly, so we have completely different um, ends of the spectrum. So they're going to take a very short little piece, usually it's two measures, um, and write something that will fit with this picture, and then they have to write a short story that fits that. There are several goals that I want them to to take away from this. There's several things I want them to get. One is that people take music for granted. Um, music is in almost everything. I sent them home to watch commercials and find one without music in it. Music is all around us and it's a great form of expression. Not just because you're going to a concert or something, but it's used in everyday life. Sound effects. You can make, you can make a fortune with good sound effects. So that there are um, careers in this. There are ways that you can apply this, that you can express yourself in another activity, language arts. Um, we've used math, we've You're used science, we've done a thing on the planets and taken all their knowledge of planets, and they had to write music that would fit the culture that they developed with that planet. So music is another way of expressing things, and it integrates into anything. We look at learning at Bailey's as being whole rather than part. We like to approach it from a wholeness. Uh, we like for children to see the whole concept, the wholeness of learning, and then they'll see the parts as they go. We don't like to teach discrete facts, for instance. We like the children to discover those rather than us teaching them. And uh, our method of teaching, we think that the children gain a lot of knowledge that isn't overtly taught. What makes Bailey's unique is the teachers, the staff members, the support we have um, across the board, all the way from the administration down to the custodians. Um, everyone works as a team. It's not just the fourth grade team. We all work together. And also the students make Bailey's unique. In terms of conceptual units, it's, it's a wonderful thing because it's not teaching in isolation, it's teaching across the disciplines. It's, it's making people whole and seeing the whole picture of what education is. It's taking real life things, bringing in community kinds of things, and using that concept over in different areas so that the children are getting a gap. I think what ba makes Bailey's unique is that children feel important. I think there's mutual respect between students and teachers. Um, my son came to Bailey's and um, he has let me know in short words that he has a voice. You know, he is important. And uh, I think Bailey's makes students feel very comfortable. It's a very warm environment.